Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Manual 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll work on some practice problems that you will find on page number 150. Please turn to it, page 150, which deals with one variable equations. We did some examples yesterday, and now today we're going to take care of the practice problem. There are five of them, page 150. If at the end of the video you decide that this was helpful to you and that you would like to work with me, just give me one second, I'm a bit distracted right now. Today is day number 13. That you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, let's take a look at the very first one. These are practice problems, as I said, on page 150. It's important that you have the book in front of you and you do the work with me. Okay, don't just sit there and stare at the screen passively. Number one, it says x minus 17 is equal to 48. And the question is, how do we go about finding the value of x? Well, let's just bring the 17 to this side by adding 17 to both sides. If we add 17 to both sides, this negative 17 and positive 17, they will kill each other. And x by itself would simply equal 48 plus 17. 8 plus 7 is 15. 5, carry 1. And that's a 6. There you go, 65. And if you wanted to, you can verify it very quickly. By putting it back in here, 65 minus 17, you will see that it is 48. That's all. Let's do number two. Number two says, well, let's do number two separately. Why, should, why make it crowded? Why make it crowded? If you, if, if after having done these problems, you, if you feel that you need, uh, you need uh, more practice. Just give me one second. I don't know why I did not take care of all of this thing. I was going to give you... Oh, there we go. If you feel that you need more practice with this, this, this type of question solving simple linear equation, equations containing one variable, on my video, you will, on my channel rather, you'll find a series of videos called basic math and search for day search for day 14 and day 29 just type in kishwani basic math day 49 the video will pop right up day 49 or rather day 14 and day 29 there you'll find some more problems we were on number 2 It says 2x minus 6 is equal to negative 4x. Again, two straightforward things we have to do. We have to bring the unknown quantity to this side and known quantity, which is negative 6, to that side. Let's do that by adding 6 to both sides. Don't put the 6 underneath the x. Do you understand? And then bring 4x to this side by adding 4x to both sides. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing two steps together in one shot, you could do two steps separately, individually. Do you understand? There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so negative, negative 4x and a positive 4x, they're going to drop out, which was the whole point. And here we have a negative 6 and a positive 6, they're going to kill each other. And that, they are gold. And we end up with positive 2x and a positive 4x, that's a 6x. 6x has to equal, there you go, 6x has to equal 6. Well, this is very straightforward. If 6 is equal to 6, x must equal 1. So well, that was very easy. Let's verify it quickly, shall we? Let's verify it right here. The verification cannot be that bad. So the equation, original equation was 2x, 2x, and we are claiming x to be 1. 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6, let's see what that is. 2 times 1 is 2, and the minus 6 is negative 4. So that's the left hand side. Let's see what, the, what we have on the right hand side. On the right hand side we were told we were told that 2x minus 6 equals negative 4x. Negative 4x. 
and negative 4 and we're claiming x to be 1 negative 4 x 4 times ne negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 it checks out it checks out number 3 Oh, number 3 is too silly. It says 6x is equal to 19. If 6x is equal to 19, if you want x by itself, let's divide both sides by 6. Let's divide both sides by 6. I'm going to bring the equal sign a little bit down because it's not lined up anymore. It, it looks ugly. So let's divide top and bottom by 6. And we have the x by itself. And x equals 19 over 6. How many, how many sixes does 19 have? 19 has three sixes. 19 has three sixes. Three sixes are 18. After we take away 18 from the 19, we have a remainder of 1. And what happens to that 1? Well, that 1 also needs to be divided by 6, because that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're dividing 19 by 6. So that one also has to be divided by 6, and the answer is 3 and 1 6. x is equal to? x is equal to? 3 and 1 6. That's what we're claiming. And if our claim is correct, if our claim is correct, then we should be able to verify it right here. Let's do that, shall we? On this side of the equation, on, on, on the right hand side, we don't have to do anything at all because it's just a constant 19. We just have to show that 6 times this quantity is 19. Let's do that here. 6 times this quantity, 6 times x, which is 3 and 1 6. And we have to show that it equals 19, which we can very easily do it by multiplying the two quantity. So here we go. 6 times 3 is 18. Is 18. And 6 times 1 6 is 1. If you have 6 times 1 6, of course, it's 1. And 18 plus 1 is 19. Let's do number 4. Number 4. Number 4 says 7 fifth x equals 7 fifth x equals 35. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Well we're not interested we're not interested in how much how much 7 fifth of x is equal to. We want to know what x is equal to. So the question is, how do we get rid of 7 fifth? Well, it's very simple. If you want to get rid of 7 fifth, just multiply it, multiply this side of the equation by 5 7 by the reciprocal of 7 fifth. Now you have to keep in mind that whatever we do to this side of the equation, we must do the same thing to this side. So let's multiply also by 5 7. All right, and let's see what happens. If we divide top and bottom by 5, these 5's are going to drop out. If we divide top and bottom by 7, the 7 is going to drop out. And we're left only with x, which is exactly what we wanted. And here we have 7 at the bottom, we have 35 at the top, 35 and 7, they both have a multiple of 7. So let's divide top and bottom by 7. If we divide bottom by 7, 7 is going to disappear. Now when we say disappear, it doesn't disappear in thin air, it becomes 1. And if you don't want to write down 1, it doesn't matter, because everybody knows Everybody knows that 5 over 1 is just 5. But that's what I mean. It doesn't just disappear, it becomes a 1. If you don't want to write the 1, that's fine. And if you, since you're dividing bottom by 7, we must divide the top by 7. 35 divided by 7 is 5. 5, 7 is a 35. 5, 5, 7 are 35 which means 5 sevens are 35. That's what we're claiming. So that's it, we're done. So x is equal to, right here is our x, and x is equal to 5 times 5 is 25. Again, if you wanted to, ver if you wanted to verify it, we could do that too. Let's do that, shall we? Let's do the verification. So the original equation said, original equation says 7 over 5, 7 over 5, x x equal 35 and we're claiming that x is equal to 25 so if you put it in here we should be able to verify it let's do that shall we we see 
you see 5 at the bottom, you see 25 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 5. If you do that, 5 will disappear and 25 will become 5 because 5 5 is 25. And what do you know? 7 times 5 is indeed 35. The bloody thing checks out. What do you know? Kind of spooky if you ask me. Let's do the last one, number 5. Number 5 says, let's see what it says. Which of the following is which is which is acceptable first step? Which is the acceptable first step for this equation right here? Six x minus 9 is equal to 3x plus 12. This is the equation that is given to us. That's the equation that is given to us. 3, 6x minus 9 is equal to 3x plus 12. And I'm going to walk, to walk you through I'm going to walk you through all the answer choices to show you why the other three answer choices that they give us are not acceptable steps. Instead of simply telling you what the right answer is. Do you understand? So just, like, so just like in any other case that we have dealt, dealt with so far, we have to bring all the unknowns to one side and all the known quantities to the other side. The unknown quantities are the x. So we have to bring this 3x to this side. So one acceptable, step, one acceptable step might be to subtract 3x from both sides. There we go. 3x will drop out and this 3x plus 3x, 3x minus 3x will become 3x. Minus 9 equals 12. That's, that's one acceptable state. There's nothing wrong with it. Other acceptable state, other acceptable step would have been instead of, instead of worrying about instead of worrying about bringing the unknown to this side first, we could have taken care of this 9 first. Let's bring the 9 to the other side by adding 9 to both sides. And that way the 9 goes away and 6x equals 3x plus 21 and then worry about bringing 3x to the side. Either of these two ways are just fine. Either of these two ways would be considered unacceptable step. Unacceptable mistake. A step. I wrote on the blackboard on purpose something that is not correct. It says, it says, which is the acceptable step. There is no such thing as the acceptable step. Because when you say which of the following because when you say which of the following is the acceptable step, that means there's only one one acceptable step and anything else is wrong. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as the acceptable step. You can do it either way. You can do it either way you want. All the, the ultimate goal is to bring all the unknowns to one side and all the known quantities to the other side. That's all the ultimate goal is. Which way you go about it and which sequence, it doesn't matter. So what they, if you read the problem carefully, if you read the book properly, the book does not say which of the following is the acceptable step. Because there is no such thing. The book says which is, which is unacceptable step. Oh, I shouldn't have written the acceptable part again because it's already there. Which is, instead of, instead of the, it should say un. And for those of you, for those of you who know a little bit of grammar, we need an indefinite article. This is called indefinite article. We do not need a definite article. Definite article being the. It is not which is the acceptable step. It's which is, is which is unacceptable step. Anyway, enough of that. So either one of those two are fine. Now let's go through the answer choices and see see if we can look at the right answer by going through each one of them individually. Do you understand? So let's first write down the equation. So the equation was six x minus nine is equal to three x plus 12. Let's see what's wrong with first answer choice. First answer choice says subtract 9 from both sides. Let's clearly see if you want to get rid of 9, if you want to get rid of 9, it's negative 9. If you want to get rid of it, the thing to do is add 9 to it. So the positive 9 and negative 9, they will kill each other. Step answer choice A says subtract 9 from both sides. Let's do that. Shall we what they're asking us to do? 
And if you did that, we'll end up in a bigger mess. We'll end up in a bigger mess. We didn't make any improvement. It's this, this equation and that equation is the same situation. We have unknowns on both sides, we have known quantity on both sides, we haven't, we haven't gone anywhere. There was, that, doesn't, that doesn't do anything. We don't need to subtract 9 from both sides, we need to add 9 to both sides. So we can get rid of this 9. Which is why answer choice A is wrong. Let's see what answer choice B says. See what B says. So here we have 9, negative. B says, B says add, add 12 to both sides. Again, that will be silly. We don't want to get rid of this 12. We want to bring this 9, this bloody 9, to this side. Adding 12 to both sides is not going to do anything. First of all, here you're going to end up being a bigger number, and here you'll end up with positive 3. It doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't get us anywhere. That's not what we want to do. B is wrong. Let's see what C says. C says, subtract 3x from both sides. There you go. Subtract 3x from both sides. This is a positive 3x. If we subtract 3x from both sides, now we are making progress. 3x drops out. And we end up here with 3x minus 9 is equal to 12. And then in the next step, next step we can bring the 9 to the other side by adding 9 to both sides. And now we're getting someplace. We'll end up with 3x is equal to 21. And we can solve for x, divide both sides by 3, and we'll end up... Now we're getting someplace. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's quickly look at why answer choice D does not make any sense. So now we are in answer choice D. D also must say something silly. This says add 6x to both sides. No, that's not good. If we add 6x to both sides, on this side we're going to end up with 12x, on this side we're going to end up with 9x, we'll have a bigger mess on our hand. That doesn't, that, that doesn't get us anywhere. The thing to do is to bring all the unknown to one side, and we do that here by subtracting 3x from both sides so we can get rid of this 3x on this side. And or that's what that's one acceptable step, or bringing the known quantity to the other side by adding nine to both sides. You have to add nine to both sides, or subtract three x from both sides. Or better yet, or better yet, if you feel that you're grown up, and if you feel that you're no longer a baby, you can do both at once. You can do both the step once at once together. Let's do them, shall we? Let's do both of the steps together. Let's bring this nine to this side. And let's get rid of this bloody 3, let's this 3x by subtracting 3x from both sides. There you go. Here we have done both the steps together. There are two steps in here. The question is which step should we do first? Which step doing it first is an acceptable step? The answer is either one of them is fine. Which is why both of them are not the answer choices there. So there we go. 9 is going to go away, 3x is going to go away. Here we end up with 3x. We just did that, we just did a second ago, and this is going to end up 21, divide both sides by 3, and x is going to be equal to 7. And that's all it is. Answer is x is equal to 7. The answer is c. Now that x is 7, now that x is equal to 7, if you wanted to, we could actually quickly verify it. Keep, remember, x, we, we're claiming that x is equal to 7. We're going to verify it. We're going to verify it right here. forgot now what it was, minus 9, and remember, we, we are claiming that x is equal to 7. So, 6 times x, which is 7, minus 9, 6 sevens are 42, 42 minus 9, 42 minus 10 would have been 32, we are not subtracting 10, we are subtracting only 9, so instead of 32, it's going to be 33. This side is going to be 33. Let's see what we get on this side, shall we? 3 times x, which, is, which we are claiming to be 7, plus 12, 3 times 7 is 21, 21 plus 12, 20, 21 plus 12, 21 plus 10 would have been 31, therefore 21 plus 12 would be 33. What do you know? I don't know about you, but it sends chill down my spine. This is spooky. 
This is really spooky. I tell you, Alfred Hitchcock could not done him better. Could not have done better than what we have done just now. It's absolutely spooky. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? If you want to get hold of me, you can reach, reach me by sending me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.